people sometimes seek treatment for complex reasons and with hidden motives, as I'm sure you're aware. I certainly was. I knew several people, for example, who attended AA and NA meetings simply in order to meet producers, agents, and publishers. <laughs> <laughs> this practice was particularly widespread in Los Angeles and the more fa fashionable parts of London. These people had to exaggerate their modest or non-existent indulgences and claim to be in the grip of powerful and debilitating addictions. Often they got carried away, especially the actors, <laughs> and constructed a series of lurid fictional melodramas into which their depravity had supposedly plunged them. These inventions became increasingly susceptible to being exposed as they grew wilder and more improbable. The fakers encountered other problems too. Sometimes they'd be in a restaurant enjoying the single glass of wine to which they were accustomed, when they'd be accosted by a fellow member of AA and have to pretend they'd just fallen off the wagon. <laughs> this lie then required them to appear at the next meeting to deliver a tearful confession and pledge their renewed determination to fight the good fight all over again one day at a time. All of this could get exhausting for them, and the stress of maintaining such elaborate deceptions frequently drove them to drink or drugs, <laughs> and they became genuine victims of the addictions which, in the beginning, they'd merely been feigning. <laughs>